I'm Gary Moody, bassoon professor at Colorado State University. Today, I'm going to discuss some ways to prepare for this year's audition material for the Colorado All-State Ensembles. In this video, I will be dealing with the etude on page 44 of the Rubank Advanced Method Book 1. The melodic patterns of the etude are primarily arpeggios. If you've already been practicing your arpeggios, you have a big head start. You can find some exercises for these arpeggios in the Rubank Advanced Method Book 1 on page 6, number 7 and 8, page 9, number 23 and 24, page 10, number 29 and 30, and page 15, number 52 and 53. This copy of the etude has the arpeggios marked in. I always write in the name of the arpeggios when I find them in the music. It helps me to connect all my previous practice with the arpeggios to the patterns I find on the page. Be careful with bar 23. The B natural carries through the bar to the last note and is frequently overlooked. Rhythmically, this etude is easy, though I've heard it frequently performed with an incorrect rhythm. The 3-8 time has only 3 eighth notes per bar, but players may miscount this rhythm found in the first and second bars and give the eighth note two beats instead of one. Be sure to play it one and two and three, one and two and three. One of the first things I do when preparing a piece is to plan where my breaths will be. Breathing is necessary to keep us alive and to have air to support the tone but where we place the breaths serve to clarify the punctuation of the phrases. Just as when there are options when placing commas within a written sentence, there are also options where phrase breaks can occur. There can be several good solutions, so feel free to experiment. Consistent breathing points also mean that a phrase will not be surprisingly interrupted with a gasp and that you'll have the same amount of air in the same points of every phrase every time, resulting in more consistent attacks. Let's take a look at the phrasing of this etude. The first phrase is four measures long with a rest where you can breathe. The second phrase is also four bars but has an elided ending, that is, the last note of this phrase is the low F in bar 9, and this same F also serves as the first note of the third phrase. See how this third phrase rhymes with the start of the first two phrases? Breaking the phrase here to breathe would be like trying to split a duplex into two separate homes. One would have no wall. It is best if you can play from the fifth bar all the way up to the double bar in the third line in one breath which is about 17 seconds. Keep the air flowing and your embouchure open in bar eight so that the low C will speak clearly. One way to test whether you can play this long is to simply hold a single note for 35 beats of your tempo. That will allow you to discover if your air is capable of sustaining for that period of time without the worry of counting and moving your fingers. If you are successful, your air should still be able to last when you put the notes and rhythms back in. If playing this long, however, compromises your tone, I would breathe at the end of bar 10 and bar 14. After the double bar, there is an eight bar passage whose first four bar section ends with another elided ending. If possible, continue without breathing to the rest in bar 24. If that is too long, I would take a quick catch breath in bar 22 after the C in the staff. Next, there are two four bar phrases with rests. Easy breathing here, then finally another eight bars, but this time the last four bars start as a repetition of the previous four, and a breath between them would help the listener hear the repetition. At the top of the staff, A's, B flats, B's, and C's are notes that can easily crack so that there is some lower octave sound at the start of the note. To avoid cracking these notes, I want to use the flick technique. This allows me to get the bassoon to speak in the second octave without pinching, which would create a thinner tone and sharp pitch. Whenever these notes are tongued or slurred into with a leap, I will use the flick keys, the A key for the A's and the C key for the B flats, B's, and C's. When those notes are preceded with a note that uses the whisper key, I let my thumb leave the whisper key early enough to arrive at the flick key 
for the start of that note. In this etude, every single A, B flat, and C at the top of the staff are either tongued or approached by a slurred leap. Therefore, I will flick every single A, B flat, and C. The only time I might not flick these notes would be when they are approached by a step that is slurred, but that never happens in this etude. In this copy, I've marked all the flicked notes using an asterisk for when I flick the A key and a small circle when I flick the C key. Practice the flicks slowly and soon it will be part of your technique. The last line of this etude has a slur from high G down to E flat, which may crack. This G to E flat can be a dangerous combination. E flat can be fingered with the first and second fingers of the left hand and either the right hand pressing one, two, three, or just two, three. When slurring down from the high G to E flat, as in bar 33 of this etude, try both combinations and see which works best for your instrument. I hope this video will be helpful to you in preparing for your audition. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Good luck. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.